Hey everyone, this is Alex from WarnOffKeys.com, and I just got access to GitHub Copilot, so I want to show you some of the pros and cons of using it in this video. If you don't know what GitHub Copilot is, they describe themselves as an AI pair programmer, and it's essentially going to be AI-generated code completion that works inside your text editor, such as VS Code, and currently it is in a waitlist preview, so you can go to copilot.github.com and sign up for the waitlist. Once you get access to it, you can install it on VS Code or whichever text editor you're using. So I'm going to go over to VS Code right now. And there's three main things I want to show you. The first one is unit tests. I want you to generate a simple function and generate some unit tests, all from just writing in comments, which is the primary way that I see people using this tool. So you can essentially just describe what you want to do, and then Copilot will auto-complete what it thinks is the best way to do it. Afterwards, we'll take a look at canvas image manipulation. So I have this image here, which is my latest thumbnail, and I want to write some text to the center of it. So we'll see how we can do that by just adding in the comments describing what we want to do. And then finally, a simple Discord bot command. Now I've tried using this tool when it comes to making Discord bots. Once you have a command already up and running, basic JavaScript logic is what it's good at. But don't expect it to generate full, working, completely perfect commands with just a few comments of code. So let's start off with unit tests. Let's go into our index.js file. And here I don't really have anything. So I'm going to add in a comment, calling it add function, and it's going to try and autocomplete some of my comments. So you see this dark gray text? That's what it's going to try and autocomplete. If I hover over this, we can click on next to go to the next option. We can go through all these here. We can go to previous. We can accept, or we can just press tab as well. And also, if I hover over this, we can click on open GitHub Copilot, which will open up the second window here. And it'll try and find up to 10 different options that you might want to use. So we'll take a look at this once we're generating some actual code. For now, I'm just going to see what it does when I just add in a comment of add function. If I press enter, it's going to automatically have this here where I can just press tab and it'll create this function for me. So now I can say add 5 and 20. And then here it's going to create a variable. For some reason, it's using var, but obviously we can easily change that. And then it's going to call the function correctly. So now what I want to do is add unit tests. So here it's going to describe add and it should add two numbers. So this seems like a correct unit test. Let's see what the next suggestion is. It should add two numbers. It seems to be the same exact thing. And for some reason, it just keeps suggesting the same thing. So I'm going to hover over this and I'm going to click on open GitHub Copilot and let's see what else there is. And so based off the context so far, it's not really doing such a good job. So I can add in a comment and see how it does. I'm going to get rid of these extra tests here. I'm going to add in should only add numbers. And so it's going to generate should not add strings. And so this right here is undefined. Obviously with this exact code, that test wouldn't pass but it generated the test with just this comment here. So if I go on and try another one, should only add numbers, which is what we just had, should only add numbers, and now it's doing things with arrays. You can't expect it to create entire projects for you just with a few comments, as I previously mentioned, but it did describe a couple unit tests and it also did create the function. Now let's go ahead and move to something more complicated, such as canvas image manipulation. So I have this image here, this is my last thumbnail. I just wanna write some text to the center by just describing it with comments. So I'm going to delete all this code. Now I'm first going to try and import Canvas, which I do already have installed. I'll just say import Canvas. And here it's going to try and use document, which isn't what I really want because I'm using Node.js and I'm not on the front end. So let's see what's next. It's assuming there's a Canvas file, which there isn't. So I don't like any of these. I'm going to open up GitHub Copilot here. And if I scroll down, we see this right here, import Canvas. This is what I'm looking for. So I want to access the create Canvas and the load image functions from this canvas object. So I could say destructure, create canvas and load image, and it'll automatically know what to do. So now I'm looking to load the image. So I can say load image.png, and it knows what to do. Now one problem is that this function here does return a promise, so I need to use await. And so because of that, I need this to be inside of its own asynchronous function. So I'm gonna create something known as an iffy or an immediately invoked function expression. So this is essentially just an asynchronous encapsulated function that is automatically ran thanks to these ending parentheses here. And within this, we now have access to the image. And now it's going to suggest that we're actually create a canvas. So it now wants to create a canvas with the image width and image height. That's correct. Next, it wants to get the context. It gets the 2D context. And then next, it's going to want to draw the image. So it draws the image it imported onto the screen or onto the canvas rather at 0, 0. And it's looking to get pixel data. I'm not sure what that actually means, but what we want to do is write text to the screen. So I can say print hello world to the center of the image. So then we have font. So it's going to try and use some type of font. It's going to text align center. 
and it's going to print hello world with image width divided by two and image height divided by two. So that seems correct. Next, it's going to suggest that we save the image, which is the next step. And here it's going to essentially just create a stream and then pipe the image onto output.png. So now let's go ahead and run this. I already have Canvas installed, so I can say node index.js. And here we see output.png. If I open it, we see hello world directly in the center right there. So it did have some things it struggled with, but for the most part, I was able to create what I wanted by just describing what I wanted to do. And because of that, I don't think that this software is going to take any software development jobs. If anything, it's just going to make the jobs much easier to do. Because the real skill in software development isn't going to be remembering a bunch of different syntax, but rather how to logically think through and solve problems. So in this case, I knew the order of things I wanted to do, and it was able to generate things, but this is a fairly basic example. I've heard a lot of people compare this to just Stack Overflow within your text editor, and that's basically what it is. So finally, let's go over and make a simple Discord bot command. So I'm going to go over to my other workspace, and here I have a very basic command. I called it add.ts, and I had to write all this code manually because, of course, there isn't enough people using one of these commands for it to actually know what to do with this. So once I have my code set up, I'm essentially wanting to take all the arguments, convert them into numbers, and then respond with a sum. So the first thing I want to do is convert all args into numbers. So here it's going to map and it's going to cast them to a number. And then I want to reply with, or let's say, oh, it actually detected that. Reply with a sum of all numbers. So we can reply with this, which is not what I want to do. I don't want to list all the numbers here. So I'm going to hover over this and go to GitHub Copilot. And here we see this right here, the sum is, and then it's going to use reduce. So this actually should work. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to run the project. So npm run dev. So now I can head over to Discord and my bot is online. So I'm going to simply do add. We could say 10, 10, and 50. And here we see the sum is 70. So I can add in as many things as I want. And it's going to convert all of them into numbers and then return the sum. So obviously this code here is just JavaScript logic and JavaScript syntax and nothing Discord JS specific. So let's go ahead and try to import and use embeds within Discord JS. So I could say import embed, and it'll detect that we're in a Discord JS project, so it will import message embed. And then here, I'm looking to create a new embed. So it'll say embed equals this, and the description is going to be all the numbers. I'm not sure why it did that, but that's what detected. Let's actually delete all of this code here, and I'm wanting to say return a new embed that has the sum of all numbers. Okay. So this actually would work. The only problem here is that this is going to be a number. So I'm going to essentially take all of this and wrap it inside of a string function call. So it'll just simply cast it to a string. And now I'm going to go ahead and save this and run the bot. So going back into Discord, here I'm going to try adding 10, 10, and 15. And now it's going to return with the correct sum within its own embed. So going back into VS Code, I stop my project here. And I want to see how far this can go. So I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to say, return a new embed with the color red that has a description of a string. So now I can press tab, and now it's going to turn the entire reduce function results inside of a template literal, so that won't cause any more errors. And it also did make it red. So that seems to have worked based off my description. So it's actually pretty cool, and this could help when it comes to speeding up the development process for even things like Discord bots. So let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think this tool is really powerful or do you think it's something that isn't that big of a deal and maybe you'll get better in the future? Thanks for watching the video. If you want to download the source code, gain early access to new videos, as well as get your own Linux VPS, then consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking on the join button directly below this video.